and welcome. So happy to have you here with me today. I am super excited, extra special show for you today. Um, my colleague, friend, uh, super happy to have Jeannie Patucci here with us today. Yay, Jeannie, hey, welcome. So super fun. Um, yeah. I'm so they, watch out though. I've had three cups of coffee, avocado toast, and I did a Peloton ride with Tunde this morning. So I'm like on fire. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. All right. So that's good because we got a lot to cover today. So good. all that extra good. energy, we'll put it to good use today. How's that? Show? Okay. <laughs> all right. So um, again, welcome those of you that are joining us live, as well as those of you that are going to catch the replay. We're super happy to have you here today. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Leslie Vitell, and I'm a business coach and mentor for health professionals. And um, we're going to just jump right in today. Um, I do want to give you just a quick overview of a few of the things that we're going to touch on today. Um, and then we're going to just jump in because like I said, we've got a big show for you today. So um, today's topic is um, it's all about nutrition content to grow and scale your business. And anyone that's been following my work for any length of time you all know this is a topic that's very near and dear to my heart. I'm always talking about, you know, really the importance of using free content to develop that all important know, like, and trust, right? We want to deepen the relationship with our audience, preferably before we ask them to buy, right? So this is a really great topic. Um, so basically, if you're looking to get out of that content generating hamster wheel, which many of us feel we know we should be doing it, but it really can be challenging. Um, if, if that is you, you're definitely in the right place today. So we are going to be talking about a few things. Um, let me just give you a really quick overview. We're going to talk about how to create nutrition content that is built on an essential framework of health behavior theory which is incredible, love that, behavior change. Why it's critical to include culinary support in your content, how to easily build offers that fit into my, yay, <laughs> profit pyramid. You guys know about my profit pyramid. And if you don't, um, we can we can go through that. Well, maybe we'll even touch on it a little bit oh, we'll, today. We'll def we're definitely gonna talk about that today. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> How to easily generate meal plans in minutes and brand them for your practice to project the highest level of professionalism and save tons of time. Love that. And um, various integrations to scale your practice and how they fit into the Living Plate RX to create a complete nutrition solution. All right. So we got a lot to cover. I'm going to hand it over to Jeannie. Jeannie, I would love for you to kick us off today, but just by telling us a little bit about you. Sure. And I really want to know what led you to doing what you're doing today. So give oh, us you, a little you background. You cut out a little bit there. You said, what led me to be doing what I'm doing? Is that what you, yeah. Yeah. okay, I read your lips. <laughs> yeah, how did you, uh, okay. what, what led you to this place where you're at today? Sure. So introductions first. Hello, everybody. My name is Jeannie Petrucci. I am a registered dietitian, nutrition educator, and culinary coach. Registered dietitian is my second career. My first career was a culinary educator for 25 years. So basically teaching people how to cook healthy. And then I just decided I needed to be able to answer the questions from people coming to my events of, well, Jeannie, this food's delicious, but how does it help me? Or, you know, how does it... Um, uh, reduce my risk of certain diseases. And I really wanted to know the answer to the question. So I went back to school and did anybody who's registered dietitian knows like it's a long path. So it took me like seven years, but then I became a registered dietitian and opened up a private practice where I am standing now. I'm actually in my teaching kitchen. So really strong focus on culinary nutrition. So we're going to talk a lot about why culinary um, skills have to be part of the conversation. So when I opened up my practice, and you're asking me kind of what inspired me to be doing what I'm doing now. Uh, I opened up my practice. I was probably about six months in. And I had I already had a really great relationship, Leslie, with oncology centers. Centers. I'm in a spot in New Jersey 
where we have quite a few oncology centers around. And a lot of them do have interest in culinary education because nutrition, um, there's a lot of research that has been done on this. Nutrition is one of the top stressors in post, like post-treatment cancer patients. So people who have undergone treatment, when they come out of it, nutrition is like one of the top stressors for them. And so they were always bringing me in and so I was getting a lot of referrals and a patient, we'll just call her Anne, came into my office. And this was not the first time a patient like Anne came into my office. She came into my office. She had just finished treatment for breast cancer. I, I'm telling you, she had a folder that was at least two inches thick from her oncologist. And she was clearly, um, she was just clearly deeply distressed shaking, teary eyed, and just basically started crying saying, my oncologist wants me to follow an anti-inflammatory diet. He gave me all of this information and I need your help. She said, I need your help. Now, Anne worked full time. She was a primary caretaker of two children. She desperately wanted to comply with what her oncologist was asking her to do. And so I'm just listening to her and like the stress level going up and up and up. And I just like got this not in my throat and my my chest literally was pounding. And I'm sure most of you can probably relate. You've probably had a patient like this before and she just needed help. And me giving her more handouts, more information was not going to solve the problem. It would have just created more overwhelm. I needed to come up with a better solution. So she, I, I worked with her and as, as I'm working with her, developing these tools, and you know, creating these tools took a lot of time. And I'm like, I, this is what I'm gonna do. I don't want another Anne to walk through my door. I don't want another Anne to work through and walk through another practitioner's door. I want nutrition professionals to be able to provide real relief and direction that is grounded in health behavior theory. And we're gonna talk all about that. So sorry if that was a long story. I got through without crying, which <laughs> it's like, that's a bonus. Um, usually I cry when I tell that story because it, it truly, it was my personal epiphany. I'm like, okay, I can now no longer counsel patients because I can't create these tools that these patients need and counsel at the same time. It was just too much time and effort. And honestly, Leslie, that's where a lot of practitioners, I'm sure you know, that's where they find themselves, right? So they're getting guidance from like pros like you. Such Again, such a pleasure to be here with you. Really respect what you do and, and the services you provide. Um, and then they have to create, cre you know, still start trying to scale their business while creating all this content. It can't be done. I'm telling you right now. It just, it simply can't be done. And so I gave up counseling. Um, we now have registered dietitians here who see patients. And I focus 110% of my energy on, again, making sure that all of the ands of the world are supported with content that is evidence-based, is appropriate, and will not add to their overwhelm, but will just help them long-term. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, okay. it does. Isn't it interesting how... I mean, I can remember my first my first patient that I worked with in my internship, my first patient I worked with at my first clinical job at Northwestern. Like, it's just so interesting how there, you know, there's these poignant moments in yeah. our careers that really kind of change the trajectory of what we end up doing and, you know, how we deliver our services. So super interesting. I'd love yeah. for you to, so Anne was clearly pivotal. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. And, yeah. But then and, like, and, and honestly represents so many people that come walking through my doors here, but she was just a great example because that was the day I decided I went, <laughs> I went home to my husband. I'm like, remember that private practice that, you know, we built this teaching kitchen and I just wanted to help people. I think I need to do something different. And, you know, God bless him. He was like, makes sense to me. Let's go. And so, you know, with the support of my family and my four kids and and you know you need support to do this kind of thing i made that total shift so tell us a little bit about that shift you know if you can get a little more specific sure. um i i'm sensing and i and i am quite familiar with your platform but just you know for the audience that, that may not be as familiar i know there's a big culinary component right so can you kind of like I don't know, give us an overview of the different pillars because you support um, our audience in a lot of different ways. Right. And my hunch is a lot of people aren't, they don't know. 
right? They well, don't even know. Okay. So all you have to do, so for all of the practitioners listening, I want you to drop in comments right now. What is your number one, like time suck in terms of content generation? I mean, obviously you're generating content, right? You're generating website content. You're generating blog posts, social media, meal plans. Meal plans, almost always, I won't give it away, but almost always is number one because that's, it's like, it's a big time suck, right? So what is the one content generating behavior that you have to engage in or that you know you should be engaging in that, you know, that that's just this big time suck for you. And that, that's everything that I do. Literally everything that practitioners are struggling with creating, not because they can't. I mean, I have a master's degree in nutrition education. So I have a different, um, you know, different lens through which I look at content creation. But, you know, nutrition pros can generate content by themselves for sure. But when you, when you take a look at the breadth of content, that you need to scale your practice, grow your practice, even just establish like basic, like establishing a practice. You need to have a website. You need to have a blog. You need to have social media. Like where is all that content coming from? Ask yourself that question. And the answer is, you know, Living Plate Rx now um, does provide uh, a super affordable way for nutrition professionals to get their hands on done for them content that is created by me and my team. So um, so let's, can we talk a little bit about, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about all the pieces of content. I rattled off a bunch already, right? Meal plans, blog posts. Um, I mean, the meal plans include recipes, definitely recipe development. Don't even try it. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I would not go there either. I'm oh, so you. that Facebook user, <clears throat> we can't see who you are, but I love that you said that because to my right, it looks like it's to your left, but to my right, right now, right now is a sink filled with dirty dishes. You know why? Because Jackie Topol and Christy Del Coro of the Culinary Nutrition Collaborative and I were in the kitchen all weekend, not only developing recipes, but doing videos of them as well. So yes, recipes, just having access, like there are a lot of nutrition professionals who don't like providing meal plans, like especially if they specialize in um, disordered eating or eating disorders, you know, meal plans might not be appropriate for everybody, but just having access to recipes that fit into different nutrition prescriptions is super useful. And so we have thousands of recipes available on our meal planning platform. Um, so why don't we, can we just, why don't we just start there meal planning? Cause honestly, I think that gets number one on the list. And you know, if you're a practitioner and you're not thinking about meal planning, it's probably because you're like, Ugh, meal planning. I mean, it is the albatross around all of our necks. Right. And the fact is most people want meal planning. They don't, they don't know why almost always, but they're like, do you do meal plans? I need a meal plan. You know, the first question you need to ask that client is, so tell me about why you think you need meal plans, right? Somebody who is asking for a meal plan is asking for support. They need support. So you can say, I don't provide that kind of support and let them walk down the street to somebody else. That, that's happened, right? Or you can provide the support in a way that is evidence-based that is gentle nutrition, that is flexible, inclusive, and totally patient-centered. That's what my meal planning platform is designed to do. And we don't use computer algorithms, so it sounds awesome. I'll plug in my carbs, my proteins, my fats, and a computer algorithm is going to spit out a meal plan for me. I promise you, those are lousy meal plans. Like, nobody's going to eat those. Um, and so having a patient-centered and registered dietitian-created meal plan system uh, you know, has been my focus. So, you know, for me, that has been, uh, you know, been a passion of mine. We have been developing it now for four years, four and a half years with support from dietitians like you, Leslie, um, we have thousands of dietitians and I say dietitians because primarily and initially it was dietitians who came on board with me. Um, but now we have health coaches and other nutrition professionals using our platform, uh, and they helped us. They're like, we need this. We need that. We want it to do this. I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Let's create our development sprint. And so I, I am a software developer. I have a, a team that develops and manages the software. Um, and, and that's a big part. It's not the only part of what I do, but it is a big part of what I do and addresses probably one of the biggest pain points for nutrition pros. Absolutely agree. And guys, bear with me if my audio is a little funky today. Um, it's my good sound now. Is okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Well, let me just say, 
I hear it all the time because I work with dietitians 24 seven, right? And um, I help them put their programs together. Yeah. And I always ask, okay, so where does meal planning fit in? And I get thrown. <laughs> <laughs> I get no. thrown, right? Leslie, like, don't oh, make me do Leslie, it. <laughs> do I have to? I'm like, uh, kind of, yeah, <laughs> because your clients are wanting it, right? Even though, just like you said, they don't always know how they're going to use it or if they're going to use it, but they, they come in thinking that's what they want. Right. And honestly, if you're not providing that service, you really are missing the boat, right? Because they are going to go find someone who does provide that service. So, um, and I, Nowadays, guys, there's really no, there's no reason not to provide it. It's not like the old days where, you know, they would take three hours. If you're spending like hours on a meal plan, there's something wrong. Okay. Yeah, Don't exactly. do that. That is not a good use no. of your time. No. All right. Well, it's anti everything I teach. Right. <laughs> so just don't be doing that. Find, um, find yourself a good, easy solution. Like what Jeannie's offering here. Yeah. And, you know, Leslie, I'm sure you talk about when you're working with your clients, like time is money, right? So if you're spending, I mean, gosh, creating one, and I did do it, like initially, I'm like, I, I can't, it was killing me, right? Just creating these meal plans, because I knew my patients needed access to recipes that were appropriate for, you know, their health goals. You know, it could take you at least three hours to create a custom meal plan for a client just to have them come back and say, Ooh, I don't really like salmon, you know, I was like, Oh, my gosh, like, what am I going to do? Right. That, that three hours, that's money. That is money out the door. So this is not a revenue generating activity, right? No, <laughs> no, it is definitely, look, we figured it out. It is definitely not something you should be doing, right? The, the, the amount, and I promise this to everybody who signs up to living plate RX, like you, your, your membership to Living Plate RX will pay for itself probably in one week. I mean, honestly, if you're if you track the amount of time that we're going to be saving you. So like I think one of the things on the agenda is how easily you can generate meal plans. Like literally, you can just click a button and send somebody a meal plan if one of our prescript pre-populated plans works for that person. But even if you had to like populate one from scratch because somebody had preferences and allergies and something pretty unique, like our certified leap therapists, um, Leslie you know, they, they, they build them from scratch. I mean, it might take you 15, 30 minutes if you're new to build out an entire week of meal plan. So like, you know, it's really, it's really, really, really easy to use. And we provide a ton of support. So when you're thinking about, you know, whether you join, you know, my membership or you purchase another meal planning platform, like think about your time and how value assign a number to your time, right? So when I first started, I was like, my time is worth $125 an hour, right? Now my time is worth more than that because I have less time, right? So as you grow and as your business gets bigger, your time becomes more valuable. So it's worth it to invest in tools that make sense and align with what you're practicing. And, and I really do, like every time we put out a tool at this point, any content, and we'll talk about the content a little bit, Leslie, all the content that we put out is requested by our community. We have, I think, 2,790 people somehow right now using Living Plate RX. And they're like, hey, we just got a request. We needed a, a low oxalate handout. Um, we had another request for gluten-free baking. I'm like, sure, we needed a handout for swaps, for eggs and flowers. And I'm like, Whatever the community needs, we deliver because if you, the practitioner needs it, then, you know, the other 2,793, you know, they probably need it too. So, yeah. So clearly the meal planning is one of the major uh, pillars of, yes. of Living Plate Rx, right? It is. It is because incorporating like, I, and this, now we'll talk a little bit about behavior change, right? Culinary competence is at an all time low, like, like low, right? <laughs> We're talking, I mean, even people have had a lot of time to spend at home because of COVID and they're cooking more still like cooking with a health goal in mind, whatever that might be, you know, reducing risk for heart disease, whatever, like it's, it's hard for people to make that transition. So the meal plans serve as this beautiful space for practitioners to have a conversation around food and nutrition with their clients, right? So, you know, yes, 
I, and I think it's been called coined like intuitive meal planning. Like I'm an intuitive meal planner. I don't always use the meal. Like I don't follow a meal plan. I'll dip into my meal plans to find recipes, but I'll basically go to the store and buy whatever. I'll buy a chicken, a turkey breast and tofu. And I can, you know, whip up something for dinner, but I have 25 years experience as a cooking instructor, right? Most yeah. people don't. So that's the meal plans support practitioners in having that conversation. And that really speaks to behavior change. Like one of one of the core pieces of the foundation of behavior change is confidence. You know, do your clients have confidence that they can bring whatever nutrition prescription you're talking about to life in their own homes? I do want to jump in and say um, there are a lot of practitioners that don't feel super confident doing that as well. Yeah. Okay. Just want to mention. Yeah. Um, and so I really feel like um, this can fill that, your uh, platform can fill that gap as well, right? Uh, so uh, if uh, you yourself that? are a, a practitioner and, you know, you're teaching all of these strategies for, you know, to help your client to improve their health and their right. diet, if you're kind of lacking in confidence on the culinary side, you know, that's create a gap, right? Because your yeah. client is going to really struggle to implement. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think you wired for the science, right? Like, yeah. you know, and I can kind of relate to that, honestly, <laughs> you know, like the way my brain works is very, you know, it's, it's very, I don't know, biology and science and, you know, uh, very clinical, right? Yeah. Um, and I think that for people like me, that the culinary side really can be a little bit more challenging. And when we say culinary, we're not like talking complicated recipes. We're not, you know, trying to create America's next top chef. We're basically supporting people in getting simple, delicious, approachable recipes to the table fast. Because the one thing that everybody is short on is time, you know, practitioners and patients alike, right? Everybody's, everybody's busy. I don't care if it's a stay at home parent that walks into my office or a parent that has, you know, a full time job and two part time jobs like everybody is busy. Our schedules are full. And so, you know, really paying attention to that. And that's part of patient centered care and health behavior theory you know, you really have to be mindful and have resources available to patients that kind of address that confidence level, right? So one of the things that I do recommend um, clinicians and, and nutrition pros do always is to assess, as part of the assessment process anyway, assess your client's confidence in the kitchen, right? If you get somebody between, I don't know, a five and a seven, like you're really good. Like that's good. But more often you're going to find people between like a four and a six, you know, asking them on a scale. And so you do have to provide a little bit more support there if you're looking to change behavior, right? So let's just be clear. When we're talking about health behavior, we're talking about changing a nutrition related behavior. Almost always, like 99.9% .9 of the time, this is what my professors drilled into my head. 99.9% .9 of the time, it is intake related, okay? My job is not to lower somebody else's uh, cholesterol. My job is not to help somebody manage their hypertension. My job is to reduce that person's sodium intake. My job is to reduce the saturated fat intake of that person, right? So always think, you know, intake related um, behaviors. And so if you're talking about intake, you're talking about food. And so, you know, the good thing is that it could take something that's pretty scary and make it joyful, right? Somebody, especially somebody who has a cancer diagnosis, right? That is super scary or anything, diabetes or heart disease. It's a scary place to be. So let's, let's talk about the food. Let's talk about the great things that you can bring into your house that are going to support you with meeting your health goals. And that's, that's why I love working in this space because it can be very joyful. I love that. Let's talk a little bit about the, um, the other component to the platform and that sure. is the content. Ugh, yeah. Uh, oh guys. Like, yeah. So uh, tell me about that because that, yeah. that's another, so like all these things that just can suck the life out of us. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> and I hear it, right? Like meal planning, big groans, yeah, right? Yeah, Nobody yeah. wants to Blog do that. Post, oh my God. Social media posts, um, what do I say? Oh like, my <laughs> God. Can I just say, <laughs> it's like, it really is like pulling teeth, right? Uh, and I got it. it. It's a lot. Okay. When you guys are, especially as you get busy, 
your practice gets busier. Your it's just the law. It's my favorite law of economics, right? The law of supply and demand. Your the time, your time is more valuable as you have less of it. Yes. So, um, but yet it becomes more imperative that you are actually producing really awesome content to develop the relationship with your audience. So how do we how do we juggle that? Yeah, and you and trust you cannot do everything. You can you can try, <laughs> you can try, but I mean, you're gonna burn out. Like that con that that hamster generating con that uh, hamster generate that wait content generating hamster world that you talked about. Like I love that that analogy because that's where you're gonna end up, right? You need to find a resource for evidence based content that you can brand. Look, you're you're bringing Leslie into your life and into your practice because she's the business pro, right? Leslie doesn't want you downloading random like pieces of content that you can't edit. They all look different. The colors are wonky. The fonts are not right. Right. That affects your brand. Right. So if you're going to be spending time and you should really honing in on your messaging and your branding, you cannot be using random pieces of content that don't follow a framework and a system. It just becomes like this hot mess. And I'm I'm speaking from a place of like experience. Like I've done that, right? Like I'm like, hey, you know, anybody have a presentation on an anti-inflammatory diet? And you know, there are very generous colleagues out there who will share their content for free or or sell it at a low price. But you just you can't build a practice on that. You need a foundation built on health behavior theory. So yeah. So the meal planning, and I often get the question like, oh my gosh, Jeannie, like, why are you doing both this meal, the meal planning software? Like the, I don't know if you've ever developed software. I know somebody who has, but like, wow, like it's a bear, right? You're never done, right? It, it is a resource intensive endeavor. Um, so I often get asked, why are you doing that? And the library, the library, which is also part of our membership is where all the content lives. It is because going back to what I said in the beginning, it is essential that you have both. You need the education and the content and the culinary piece. You just, you can't have one without the other. So the pillars of health behavior theory that kind of I operate in, right? Number one is knowledge. And that what's funny, Leslie, is like, that's where most clinicians spend their time because that's where we're comfortable, right? Like we've got expertise in certain areas and we just want to share, 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 right? Like we just want to do this knowledge dump on everybody. And, you know, that it's okay because people do need knowledge, but knowledge alone is not going to change somebody's behavior, but it's necessary, right? You need to provide evidence-based knowledge, whether it is in the form of a course, a digital course, which we have full digital courses built out and ready for you to brand and use on your own and edit. So of course, just like a simple handout, you know, if somebody comes in uh, and they just, you know, were released from the hospital have, from a kidney stone, like, yeah, a low oxalate handout could be really useful, right? Along with a low oxalate grocery list and a low oxalate meal plan, right? So it kind of just all feeds into that. So the knowledge is really, really important. Another important piece of the health behavior theory is the perceived outcome expectations, right? Your clients are coming to you because they perceive that you are going to help them achieve their health goals. And that's all part of what you help the practitioners with, Leslie, right? Which is that messaging, which is so important, right? So getting people into your practice is really important because you're, you're you know, they're getting there because they have a perceived outcome expectation. Like, oh, she's, Leslie's going to help me. Jeannie's going to help me. This nutrition professional, they're going to help me, right? And then as your relationship unfolds, like that, that continues, like, are all of the things that you're going to be giving this person and all of the um, behaviors that you're going to ask them to engage in, are, do they perceive that they're going to help them? If they don't perceive a positive outcome, forget it. Like you never, you're never going to move the dial on health behavior theory. Like just give it away now. It's just not going to happen. You're never going to change their nutrition related behavior unless they have a positive outcome expectation, right? And meal planning kind of plays into that. If they feel supported, they're going to have a more positive outcome expectation. Um, confidence, we already talked about. They need, your patients need to feel confident. So we have knowledge, perceived outcome expectations, confidence. They have to have confidence in the kitchen. So you need to meet them where they are, right? I, I'm just going to take a moment right here just to say that I am in the middle 
of developing the most epic culinary skills nutrition course with Jackie Topol and Christy Del Coro of the Culinary Nutrition Collaborative. So two, like, uh, I respect the, these people so much. They're colleagues and they're just, they're just the most wonderful people to work with. We are building this culinary skills course that's going to be part of our membership that you can help people with in improving their confidence in the kitchen, right? So we're going to be grading recipes. So there's going to be level one, two, and three. If you've got a client who's like, like a three on the confidence scale, you're not going to give them a level three recipe. You're not going to say, oh, here's this delicious mushroom uh, risotto. Like, go make it. Like, no. No, <laughs> right? that would be a disaster. How about, how about overnight oats? or this really simple hummus, right? So we're really going to be mapping it out from you. But Grade the recipes so like, so that we can figure out what's a good fit for our clients. Exactly. And so you're going to be able to like, so clinicians can take this course too. It's going to be available to them at, at no cost in our membership. But when they in turn share it with a client, they'll have a really good understanding of, okay, in the vegetable module, there are these, you know, bunch of different recipes. We're going to start here, right? And then that kind of gets to goal setting too, like getting people to engage in behaviors. Make no mistake, cooking is a health behavior. Cooking is one of the most powerful mediators of health behavior, nutrition-related health behavior. If somebody doesn't cook, it's not likely that they're going to change their health outcomes, right? Um, and, and when I say cook, it could be something as simple as a no-cook recipe, you know, literally apples with nut butter and flaxseed, like something that doesn't require much, but somebody needs to show them how to do that. Um, and then self-efficacy, which does kind of build off the confidence, but are your clients able to perform these behaviors? If not, they're not going to get the outcome that they or you are looking to get them. But that transformation, right, that you're promising them through all the messaging that Leslie is supporting you with. And then ultimately goal setting, Leslie, you know, you really need to have um, culinary nutrition is part of goal setting. And when I say, you know, we feel, we feel very confident telling people, I want you to engage in 90 minutes of rigorous physical activity every week. Great. Everybody can walk, right? It's a little bit different when you're asking people to meet cooking goals because not a, everybody can walk pretty much, but not everybody can cook. So it's a little bit messy. So we support you with that so that you can say, take a look at your meal plan, I want you to just focus on snacks. Let's say you're counseling a client and they're working and like one of the areas where they struggle, and this comes up a lot uh, in counseling, is once they get to work, they're like snacking, snacking all day long, right? So let's focus on snacks and just take a look at the meal plan. You can see it. The client can see it. Done. They just start there, right? So meeting the client where they are and setting appropriate goals, really important. So pillars, knowledge, perceived outcome, expectations, confidence, self-efficacy, and goal setting. Those certainly are not the only mediators of health behavior theory, but those are the ones I focus on. So let's talk a little bit about one of my favorite topics, and that is the profit pyramid. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes. So, so how does this fit? Blew my mind when you shared that with me because I'm like, yes, like, it totally makes sense. It's so funny when you share the profit pyramid. Does everybody know? You want to share what that is? Does everybody here know what that is? Uh, probably a lot of people do. I'd love to get a sense. Give me a thumbs up if you know. A thumbs up if I'm you know the about. profit pyramid. So, And while well, you do that, yeah, go ahead, Jean. Well, I was just going to say, when I saw your profit pyramid, to me, it was basically an upside down funnel, right? So I do run sales funnels, quite a few of them. And it's an upside down pyramid. Yours is like this, but it is essentially the same thing. You want to, you know, at the base, at the foundation, you want to get a lot of people in to your world, right? Into your sphere. You need to generate cold leads and, you know, attract attention so that you can move them up, right? How do you do that? That's always the question. Uh, How do you attract more what? leads, Jeannie? Content. If you <laughs> yes. are not, I mean, I'm sorry. It's content. It's all content. Choir. It's, it's video <laughs> content. So look, we, we started about four months ago um, uh, providing white labeled, so generic cooking videos to our membership, right? So now our membership has access to cooking videos that they can like send to clients and include in their EHRs and use in social media because that was a great, you know, all of the social media platforms favor video. So we need to support our clients with video. We also support them with how to do lives. I mean, you and I do it all the time and it's, it's, it's always stressful guys. Don't like, it's never easy, but like you, 
you always suck a little bit less every time you do it. So you always and, get a little yeah. bit better. Like you're, you're not, you, you know, you have to, you have to do it right. Um, in order to suck less. Right. So, you know, eventually you get to a place where you're just like comfortable and you're like, you know, stuff's going to happen and it's okay because that's what you need to do. So yes. So how do you do that at the base of the pyramid content creation that speaks to your ideal customer avatar? That's it. Not be generic. It cannot be generic. <laughs> and it no one be is going well to. Yeah. I mean, you got to put your brand essence in it for, for crying out loud. Like you spend so much time designing your logo and crafting your message, like put it in there, you know? Right. So that bottom of the pyramid. So like yeah. guys just draw, like those of you that aren't familiar with the concept, if you just simply draw a triangle, right? I mean, super simple, draw a triangle. For the sake of ease, we'll just divide it into three sections yes. of your triangle the bottom section is where people find you right this is the widest part of your triangle and this is usually free content okay so um, i mean it could be doing webinars it could be um, community facebook lives instagram like a gazillion different options to get found it could be your health profs listing yep you do that brings people in and expands your reach so the right people find you that is the base of your triangle and then in the middle and again there's like some you know some nuances here but just for the sake of our conversation today the middle would be your leveraged offers right this is where it's i always say it's the next best thing to cloning yourself right yeah. this middle yeah. section um it, and and as practitioners, many of us really, really love working with groups. Like I think many of us enjoy teaching. And so this would be your group programs, your courses, your, you know, those passive income uh, types of, of opportunities that you create for yourself and your business. And then at the top of your pyramid, you've got your one-to-one -one services. And these are your high touch offers. So one-to-one, -one, generally, this is your highest price point the higher or the more personalized attention in your offer generally the higher that price point right yeah so yeah yeah and 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 so that's the whole idea so i think um what i love about genie's content is i mean there's a lot of really cool things and i've seen it work i've actually witnessed um actually i can share a little success story kind of off the cuff oh fun so, i haven't heard this yet. yeah yeah, yeah, it's it's a really good one. Good. So, um, so one of my clients, um, uh, this was I don't know six months ago or so. So she's more in the intuitive eating market, right? And kind of like you know, like really kind of like, oh, how can I jumpstart this? How can I really catch people's attention? And so what she did, I thought this was brilliant, is she went to Jeannie's content library. She herself is a huge fan of Trader Joe's, okay? And, and she talked to some girlfriends, just kind of like got a sense of what people were looking for. And she extracted from Jeannie's library this, um, I think it was like a, a Trader it's, Joe's it's, it's shopping ultimate, list. It's the ultimate guide to yeah. Trader Joe's. Yeah, yeah. basically. Okay, guys. So what she did, this is super cool. Um, so she branded that, she used that as her freebie, and she found a couple of local Facebook groups, okay? And I think that's really important for the strategy. Like Facebook groups that she was a part of, I think it was the local mom's group in, in New Jersey, Excellent. right? So she was a, you know, I love that because you're not just like an outsider yeah. just trying yeah. to like, you know what I mean? Like she was a part of this group and she right. came in. Anyway, bottom line is she left this really nice post and said, I came up with this resource. I know everyone's like pulling their hair out right now with kids at home yeah. and COVID yeah. and who would have thought we'd be homeschooling. <laughs> and here's this awesome tool for you. Oh my God. Can I just say, this was a great success story. So she must've gotten easy 70 opt-ins from that, just from that one post, but was really cool is she got at least three new private clients at 1500 bucks a pop 
from that one post. Okay, so she's she's paid for many, 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 many years of li her Living Plate RX Pride membership. So that that's a great story, Leslie. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. It was so exciting. Um, you know, it was a thrill to see and and it was super helpful and very relevant. And, you know, at the end of the day, it was just such a great way for her to, again, serve a population, really expand her reach and do it in a way that felt really authentic. So yeah, I love, I love that. that. I love that. So like everything, so that particular ebook, I think it's like 12 pages long. So it's not an insignificant, it's not like a handout, right? It's not an insignificant piece of content. Another piece of content that got used very heavily in the past, what are we, like 18 months, 20 months now, um, was nutrition for the, your ultimate guide to nutrition for optimal immunity, right? So all about immunity and the immune system and foods to that support, you know, we're very careful to say, and then this is like the evidence-based piece of it, right? We don't say that foods can boost immunity because that's not true. They can support immunity for sure, but boosting is a really powerful word and you don't want to float that out there. So when we're creating content, we're really thinking about the words that we're using and, and our community keeps us in check every once in a while to be like, ah, you know, could you just change the wording here a little bit? Um, yes, of course, like you guys are the experts, right? So um, yeah, so you know, finding that piece of content that speaks to your ideal customer is key, and and it's you don't just do it one time, right? So that that client of yours, Leslie, you know, used it once to generate you know three leads, and people might be saying, well, wow, seventy people downloaded it, but only three people joined her program. Like, guys, that actually is an amazing <laughs> conversion rate. Right. I do want to comment on that. Um, yeah. Guys, back to that pyramid, right? That's her high level, right? That is her one to one services. Yeah. Those other 70 people, who knows when they're going to sign up, right? Like <laughs> that was just right out of the gate. That was like, seriously two days later yeah and and that that just what you said leslie like you have those other what 67 people now right what you do with those 60 so now those those are no longer cold leads those are warm leads right what you want to do is nurture them in an email sequence which we also provide so you know and we don't just provide nutrition education content. It's a lot of what we do and it's my expertise. So like I focus on that a lot, but I also in certainly in the past three years have, you know, become an expertise in my own business, an expert in my own business on scaling and using Facebook ads and email sequences, like all these things that I actually love learning about. So I love technology and I love marketing. That was actually my first college diploma was, was uh, communications and marketing. And so I really I like love that. So we provide, I think, several six email sequences that they're basically like Mad Libs, like insert your brand here, insert your product here. But, you know, your practitioners have like uh, like our members that have a huge head start rather than looking at a blank Google Doc thinking, oh, my gosh, like, where am I going to start? Like, you know, Googling email sequences or just buying templates like you know, it's not, not, it's not the easiest route. Like we, we, we do our best to provide. Oh, Abby has a question joined late. Would this be a good fit for someone who takes cooking and has no time to cook nutritious meals and also lives outside the U S so a great question. Um, so yes, Abby, I mean, if, if you're talking about yourself and or a client, there are plenty of resources that support people with, kind of non-cooking. We actually have a guide called your called Frozen to Fabulous and that we created just before the pandemic. So it was ironic that we that that, that came out um, that focuses on how do you take something from your freezer and like frozen shrimp or frozen green beans and like transform it or you know no we have an entire recipe guide on no cook meals. So, you know, we we do focus on culinary skills development Abby, um, but you know, but not high level, like it starts wherever the patient is at. We don't support people in eating out, although the Trader Joe's was probably as close as you get to that. Um, but we do support people with really simple things. And then the outside the US thing, um, question, uh, we have people all over the world using our content, all, all over the world. Um, we have a lot in Australia, Canada, South Africa, because we partner with um, 3X4 Genetics, which we haven't even talked about yet. 
Um, so we have, so oh, yeah. our, meal, our meal plans um, do have metrics, so you can convert everything to metrics. And, you know, our content is, is you know, it's evidence-based, it's nutrition, it's culinary focused, so appropriate for everybody. So, you know, if I have a client who's like a little scared in the kitchen, I might send them, you know, the overnight oats video or a smoothie video and make the Trader Joe's, right? If they're in South Africa, I'm not going to send them the Trader Joe's, I'll do something else. But tons, tons of stuff. Minute because we're uh, almost out of time. Okay. Um, I have noticed that you've uh, you've got a couple new partnerships oh. and a couple of my absolute favorite companies. I might add. Yes. And uh, that's Full Script and Three X Four. So yes. yeah, tell us just um, how does that benefit our shared audience? Yeah. So first of all, we only partner with kind of like gold standard individuals in like in their kind of pillar, right? So we partner with Leslie because Leslie is just like, you know, rock star in her pillar of business development and business coaching. 3X4, interesting about them. So 3X4 Genetics is a, it's a nutrigenomic testing company. So essentially you have access to a test that you're, that you can either include in a package or your patient can pay for. It's a mouth swab, you send it out, a report comes back and identifies a pathway that you need to focus on to ensure positive health outcomes kind of long term based on your personal nutrigenomics. What's interesting about 3x4 genetics is that we were as a meal planning company, I was approached by at least half a dozen genetic companies saying, we need meal plans, we want to use your meal plans. I'm like, Oh, I don't know, like some was stool testing, some was like, it was like, kind of like all this random stuff. So you know what, I called our colleagues, Kathy Swift, number, actually was number one on my list, Kathy Swift and Sheila Dean, who I know you know personally. And I'm like, what's the deal? Who's the best in the business? 3X4. I'm like, done. That's that's what I'm And I'm only going to partner with them. So you benefit because for all of those pathways that come back on the nutrigenomic testing, we created a meal plan for. So if it comes back that my client should follow the inflammation that needs to pay attention to their inflammation pathway, you have a 3X4 inflammation pathway meal plan that you can click and send along to the, you don't even have to think about it. So 3X4 gave me their protocol. We transitioned it to a meal plan. So we are bridging the gap between the science and the food. And we say we're making science delicious with all of our partnerships. That's what we're doing. Same with Fullscript. Now Fullscript is interesting yeah. because that's an online dispensary for supplements, right? What I love about Fullscript is that they totally subscribe to food first right? In, as medicine, right? You shouldn't just take supplements. You need to address the nutrition. And then the supplements are just that they supplement nutrition. So we worked with Fullscript to create meal plans for their protocols. So we just provided them with a Mediterranean, a low FODMAP and an anti-inflammatory. So when you are a Living Plate RX member, you get access to uh, full script integration, 3x4 integration, and, and others. We, inter we integrate with other platforms as well. But you know, these, these two organizations, Leslie, that I know you have relationships with too. Um, we're just so, so thrilled to work with them. And my three X four, uh, genetic test that I'm going to do this weekend. Oh, I did it. It was great. It was, yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're so great. And, and, and the support that their team gives you is incredible in terms of training. So you don't have to have, you know, very deep knowledge on nutrigenomics, like trust the process, trust the science, get the training. But the 3X4 report that comes back is really very easy to read and understand and interpret. And because we, su we support you with the meal plans and 3X4 supports you with the content um, to deliver to your clients, it just makes it really easy. So yeah, always um, happy to partner with kind of these gold standard institutions, yeah. So anything else that you want to add as we wrap up for today, Jeannie? Just I know we could go it, on and on. We'll have to I do know, this and, and I, and I <laughs> honestly- Never I love, enough time. I love, there's never enough time. I love speaking to you. I, I love serving our community. Like that, it, I am a mission-driven person. I am here to serve you know, nutrition professionals in, and, and the way that I can serve you is by saving you time and by supporting you in scaling your practice, right? Because it doesn't make any sense for me to give you things that aren't going to support you in growing your business, right? Like what I love about our community, Leslie, is that we really, we're all like in it for the same reason, pretty much. We're all in it to help people. We all want to help people. 
but you can't help people and you can't help more people unless you have a profitable business, right? So that, you know, the, the exchange of money is really just exchange for value, right? So I'm providing super, super high value to you so that you can in turn provide value to your clients and grow your business. So again, here for you, however I can help you. If you're watching this as a recording, you can tag me with any questions that you have. Um, Leslie and I will probably send a follow-up email to everybody, um, just letting them know how they can learn more about you know, what we have in place and what's coming down the pike. So much more content coming, we're really excited. Awesome. So uh, how can people reach out to you? Yeah. Yeah, so Jay Petrucci at livingplaterx.com. You can also just go to livingplaterx.com and um, you can apply for an account. So you have to apply to become a member of our community. Um, so we ask you to upload your credential, whether you are a healthcare professional or a wellness professional. We have, thank you for that, Leslie. Um, we have kind of a, a specific program for each because you know health coaches aren't necessarily interested in content surrounding chronic kidney disease, right? And it's not appropriate. Like, but why do I need to include that in their library? So we actually have um, two separate programs, one for wellness professionals, so that includes health coaches, um, physical therapy, now physical therapists, probably healthcare, but um, I'm thinking of um, a certified personal trainer, for example, would definitely be a wellness professional. And then the healthcare professionals, of course, registered dietitians, but doctors of chiropractic, um, naturopaths, nurse practitioners um, who do more clinical work. So you just apply, let us know who you are, feel free to send me an email, happy to answer questions or tag me here and Leslie and I um, are happy to support you. We'll take care of you. Okay, Phoebe, oh my gosh, what a pleasure. It was oh, so much fun, great. Yay. Thank you, we'll thank you again. so much. I'll talk to you guys soon, bye. Connect, I say, why don't we do it more? We are gonna yes. do it more. <laughs> yes, yes, All right, yes, guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thanks, um, And you I too. look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye for now. Okay, see you in the kitchen soon, bye.